One of the community members, actually they loved it so much that he like went out and bought like a smart TV and started buying like all of this equipment that he can use on the Wi-Fi now because he's just like, I've never been able to do this before on my Wi-Fi connection. And, and now here we are, you give me this great connection. Now I can get, you know, I can start watching Netflix and Hulu and doing all this stuff. And he'd really have these these big aspirations with what he could do with the internet, so. Our very first um, installs, your staff came out and they handled through the terrain and they, whatever the weather was at that time. <laughs> We either have hot or warm, so. Um, Tharath Utility Authority, we wanted to build a wireless system in each village. And under the Obama administration, we were recipients of the BIP Aura grants. And we started to build fiber to the home. Included in that grant, we decided to build a wireless system. After that project was completed, we realized that it wasn't the best fit for us because you had to stay within close proximity of the equipment. When the pandemic happened, we were required to turn up our wireless system and we pretty much failed in all aspects. So at that time, we started to seek other avenues of creating or rebuilding our wireless system. And it was through our engineering company, Palmetto Engineering, that we found buy cells. We tested a couple of sites as we started to build um, fiber in some of the southern villages, and we found the BuySells product to be very robust. It was able to give us connectivity at greater distances. In some cases, we were looking at a mile, two miles away from any of our electronic sites. So at that point, we decided to go ahead and um, move forward. So in, in the beginning, it wasn't very, um, I, I think there was a lot of misunderstanding from the community as to what exactly it was that we were taking out there and what um, was being put on their, you know, on their houses, essentially. And as the team continued to go out and uh, that in conjunction with our operations manager, Kristen, going to community meetings and, you know, the community just seeing other aspects of the team out, out there installing antennas gathering more information, we've slowly started to see uh, the community be more receptive to um, the technology, you know, that, that's going out to the, the deployment. So much, in fact, that just recently we learned that one of the communities that is actually in line to get fiber to the home in the next couple of years, they actually are, they, they want the entire community to put be put on this network in the meantime, which is something we've never really seen before where the community leaders are actually coming forward and saying, hey, if this is if this technology is available, we don't want to wait. We want we want it now until you can get us fiber to the home. So that's really been encouraging, uh, an encouraging thing that's come up recently. I think the LTE was a, I don't know, it's more, it's the newer technology, I suspect. And like when we first uh, deployed 2.5, we, we were going door to door like the, some of the girls are doing now and some of them rejected putting that unit on the home. So um, those are the customers that, I, I think they're coming back to say, hey, can I have that on our house so we can, and I heard you could get internet with it. They, they, they tell the front office and so. Um, we've had a few customers that either just moved back and um, have been interested in getting an internet service, but just haven't had the time to come out. And so they do 
appreciate us going out to them um, to bring them the information and uh, now we are able to email that information to them so there's a easier way for them to get that connection and get started with the services so we actually have customers requesting it um, especially where we still have copper and we plan to build out our fiber network by the end of 2024 and they've asked if they could have access to this wireless system until they get their fiber to the home. Currently, um, as of today, about 70% of the reservation can access that. We cover 54 villages. There are 72 total villages on our reservation. By the end of the summer, or in the next 60 days, 100% of our main reservation will be able to access that network. During the pandemic, we also applied for the broadband spectrum that was available, which we received, and we did solicit for other radio systems. However, Bicells was the only company that had everything that we needed, including the authentication piece that we needed so that if customers needed to be disconnected or um, services restored, we can do that remotely without having to go physically to do that. So then that's when we decided to go ahead and um, move forward with the buy cells. We went with the 2.5 gigahertz spectrum that we received. For the villages that weren't, we couldn't, that we needed unlicensed, we went with the 3.65 and we're currently building that out today. The buy cells equipment, I think it can be used more as a, a backup. Um, for our current fiber network, say there's a cut in the fiber, we can utilize it for that and still provide customer internet connectivity to the home. Or um, I know we were looking into doing some kind of telemedicine, um, just working so that some of our elders won't be able to, that couldn't be mobile, won't be able to just get on the computer and be able to talk to their doctor that way. Actually, when we first started, it was all new to us, so. We had a couple of you guys' employees come out and then representatives come out and show us. And then they worked us through how, you know, everything needed, to, what needed to be done, where it needed to be plugged, how it needed to be wired. So once we got that and then we kind of went on our own, we did it. And then guys come back and visit us and look at our work. And then they were like, well, you know, hey, this is pretty good. So, but once we got it, we, we took off with it. We didn't have any problems with it. Um, we are 4,400 square miles. We do have some rough terrain. We do have a village, um, Fresno Canyon. It's, you know, just south of here. And it's just that it sits in a canyon. Um, it houses very few homes. However, it's it becomes difficult for us to construct into that because of the mountainous area. The farthest distance that we've been able to test the buy sells product successfully is, and I only say this because it's just a need, not so much that we haven't tested it, is about four miles. However, um, one of our final phases in our wireless system is to build a mobile component so that as our community members leave the village, they can continue their service, you know, throughout the, the highways, the roads, and not have a disruption in whatever they're doing. Um, connectivity wise. One of the first villages that we tested in is Gaka, which is about a good hour drive from here up to the northwest um, part of the reservation. And uh, when we when we first installed the Biocells equipment, uh, again, Gaka, it was on um, ADSL copper connection, um, copper to the home. So the highest speeds that they could get was was 15 megabits download on a good day. I mean, that was like a really good day. And when we installed this equipment, we explained everything to them and they were, they were pretty receptive. Yeah, we'll give it a shot. This sounds like something that might be, you know, beneficial for us. One of the community members, actually they, they both loved it, but one of them loved it so much that he like went out and bought like a smart TV and started buying like all of this equipment that he can use on the Wi-Fi now because he's just like, I've never been able to do this before on my Wi-Fi connection. And, and now here we are, you give me this great connection. Now I can get, you know, I can start watching Netflix and Hulu and doing all this stuff. And he'd really have these, these big aspirations with what he could do with the internet. So 
that and that was you know that was one of the first villages that we went into at that time so i'll just ask you a couple questions Uh, my name's Leo Porter, and uh, we've been on the network, I want to say, a good year and a half. Uh, so far, I haven't had too many issues with it. It's been working pretty well. I just mentioned ionization is kind of buffering, messing with the buffering. But uh, other than that, it, I mean, it's completely out of the way. You know, it's, it's, we don't have any other issues. But, so what were you on before you got on? Ah, uh, the DSL, yeah. So I mean, we, were, we were connected to that. The modem in there wasn't working too good. Yeah, I got about two TVs and two laptops that are all going to the students. So. But uh, yeah, it's, it's it's been good. The quality is pretty good. It should quality comes in pretty good. Uh, it's fast. Like I said, some of the houses are still in the copper lines. So. All right, it's, it's a big upgrade from that. But we, we want the fiber off. <laughs> I do highly recommend it. Um, it hasn't uh, come across anything that we couldn't get through. The support from Bicells has you know, always been there for us. We're able to call for technical support. I mean, Bicells even had um, representatives come out, but my staff has been able to handle this on their own. Uh, we do have different parts of the installation, different parts of the maintenance um, within NAW, CO, IT, the different um, areas that I mentioned I oversee. Um, but it's very simple from what I can tell to use. Um, we haven't had to maintain or, you know, do any repairs to it since we've had it. I know a lot of the smaller tribes that may not even have fiber infrastructure in place, even to the cabinet, um, they may only be running, some of them still may be running like below two megs service. So this would definitely be something that I would recommend to other tribal entities to, to definitely look at, even and even if it's only part of the reservation or part, part of their service area, it's definitely something that they should look into. We do have an annual rodeo fair that attracts thousands of people to our reservation. We want to be able to provide them data connections. Um, and then we also have um, events throughout the reservation that we want to be present at or sponsor and support through data connections. Um, so that will be one of our future projects.